What's up YouTube, it's Mike aka Plastic Life and I'm back with another action figure review, this time on the Figma Demon Souls Maiden in Black. We got our first Demon Souls figure, the Fluted Armor, a couple of months ago and I thought that figure was absolutely amazing. The Maiden in Black is cool in its own way but it functions very different from the Fluted Armor. Let's get her off the stand and take a closer look. Alright, here we go. The Maiden in Black is of course the non-playable character that resides in the Nexus and although her origin is never really explained, we do know that she is a very powerful demon. She helps you through the game by allowing you to level up your character in exchange for souls you collected. And if you played the PlayStation 5 version, then you can definitely see that this is an awesome rendition of her in action figure form. The sculpt work on this figure is absolutely amazing. Taking a look at her dress, you can see all the interwoven fabrics all the way throughout her dress, even down to where the knees are, where it ends, the tattered, kind of raggedy appearance with some dry brushing in there as well to bring out some of the color. Looking at the head sculpt, I think they did a fantastic job on that. Very good likeliness to the character. Included her cheesecloth or wax. I'm not even sure what that stuff is on her eyes, but I've always thought it was just candle wax or a cheesecloth, but not really sure what it was. Her hair came out great. Nice braid in the back. Very, very nice likeliness to the character. They've included some very, very nice detail on her cloak all throughout the upper portion of the cloak. Painted her brooch and necklace. The rest of the cloak is a non-wired fabric. So keep that in mind. Nice detail on the little belt all the way down. Matches the necklace. Very, very nice. Very great details included in this Figma figure. All right, so I had an extremely unfortunate event just happen. I had knocked my tripod into my diorama, resulting in the figure falling off the table and landing directly on the neck and shattering the neck peg. Yeah, that really, really sucks. So I was able to remove the neck peg with a drill bit, and I'm gonna use a donor neck peg from another Figma figure. However, this neck peg is a little bit thicker, as well as the ball, so I'm going to have to do some uh, Frankensteining just to see if I can get this to work. Unfortunately, the ball peg is much bigger on the donor uh, than the Maiden in Black, so I'm going to try to just sand this down. If I can't get this to work, then I'm probably not going to finish this review. Alright, so I managed to get the ball peg in there and I mean it's not 100% perfect because this ball is a little bit wider so I'm going to just try to just get that neck put on like so and there we go, I think that works. Uh, only issue is I think we're going to be limited in the downward motion of the neck but at least we got the head back on and I can still enjoy this figure to some extent. Alright, I think we fixed it. Good as new. The upper part of the cloak is made out of a solid plastic so that's going to limit articulation of the head and it's also going to limit articulation of the arms. One of the things that stands out here is in her chest region, uh, the divots that go into the shoulders are very, very deep. And that's just to let the arms come up, but it looks kind of silly when it's, it's just in a neutral position, especially from the side. You can see this giant divot going in towards the shoulder. So, I mean, they had to make some kind of design choice there to help the arms come up, but it does look kind of silly in a neutral position down to the legs of the figure. She got some really dirty feet. Kind of looks kind of silly because it's dirty all the way up to here and then the calves are essentially clean. She's got a really nice ankle band. It's probably some kind of thing that helps her bind to the nexus or something, but yeah, that looks good. It's very nicely sculpted. 
Something to note is that the flesh tone of the hand does not match the color of the wrist peg. The wrist peg is much lighter and under my studio lights this becomes very very visible. When we look at the ankles, uh, they're a little bit better but because the feet and the calves are weathered and dirty but the ball peg isn't weathered and dirty then you can kind of notice that as well. All right, jumping into accessories now, we get five pairs of hands. First, we have our relaxed and open palms. We get a pair of open palms that's almost like a reaching to grab your hand. We get a pair of fists in case you want to throw some hands. We get a pair of gripping hands, and we get a pair of pointing hands. There's a little bit of lack of detail on this. There's no fingernails or anything like that, so that's kind of a bummer there. We get a torch pole. And this thing looks really good. It's a very long accessory, so I'm not going to put it together just yet. But getting a look at some of the details. I think the flame came out nice, however it is a little bit opaque near the bottom. I would like to have been a little bit more translucent. There's a wash on the pole, so that looks really good. You can remove the flame just by pulling it out. And then you can have an unlit version. There's just a little porthole for you to put the staff together. Be careful though because those parts are thin and I've already broken one part of this figure so just be careful when you're assembling that. To get her to hold the torch you want to put the gripping hands on first. Take the lower portion of the torch and then slide the base in through the left hand first. You need to be careful with these grooves so I just kind of twist it a little bit until I can force it through all the way until you get to this part and then you're going to push the top part through the right hand like so and then you're going to port the top onto the bottom like so and then there we have our very long torch this thing just does not fit on camera, but it is an awesome accessory and it looks exactly like it does in the video game. She does become a little bit heavy to one side, but you can see she can still stand up. If you mess up and you break one of the wrist pegs, she comes with an extra. I wish she came with an extra neck peg though. Before we move on to the next accessories, I want to go into articulation because the accessories that are coming up are required for some of the articulated poses. Starting with the neck that I had just broken, she can look up about that much and she can't really look down that much, especially with my new neck joint there. The way that her hair is, because it's stiff, it makes it difficult to rotate over top of the upper part of the cloak because the upper part of the cloak is also hard, so that gets in the way when you're turning the head. And then she can move her head side to side with the original joint as well. Because of the way that the chest is cut and the top of the cloak, the arms can only move up about this much. And they can move out to the side about that much. There is a bicep swivel that functions very well. And the arms, they come off so that you won't have to worry about breaking them that way. There is a double jointed elbow that functions about that much. The wrists can rotate. They can move up and down, and if you turn the ball peg, they can move in and out as well. The shoulder can drop down with that ball peg, but just remember to push it back up, otherwise her arms will look like they're very long, so just kind of push that right up so that she is a little bit more proportionate. There's some articulation on her ponytail. There is an upper and lower abdomen cut that's capable of producing about that much forward flexion and about that much extension. Sometimes it looks weird, like there's a little bit of a gap here. But you just kind of have to adjust it accordingly to make it look like those are one piece. It can rotate side to side and it can bend side to side as well. When you do move the lower abdomen, just remember that when you turn, you're going to separate the belt. So if you're taking photos or if you're trying to pose it up, that's not going to look good because they're not aligned properly. Now the lower body is where we see a totally different system for articulation. From here to here is one solid piece. There is no leg that goes all the way up to the hip. 
The legs are actually just the lower legs and you swap out the skirt pieces to get into dynamic poses. I'll show you that in a second. So when it comes to lower body dynamic poses, we have to swap out this entire region. We're given two other options. We are given a lower body where the legs are more extended and we're given a lower body that is more of a deep seated position with the knees bent around 90 degrees. To make this change, first thing you need to do is remove the upper body from the lower body by just pulling, twisting, and eventually you're going to separate that piece. Next you'll want to remove the legs just by twisting and pulling. Grab the option piece that you're looking for, remove the plug by twisting, revealing a small hole for you to port the ball peg in there. Line that up and just push that in like so. You have your two ball pegs that you just slide the corresponding legs into. There we go. And then you can have your maiden in black in a seated position. You can do the same for the other option get her into a more of a deep seated position. So now I know this system may deter some of you from purchasing this figure, but I do think it is the best option given the character's design and how this dress is in the video game. It's a very long and form fitting dress. It's very difficult to create this in figure form without, you know, being sheer material and being springy enough where you can pose the legs without them coming back in because of the elasticity of the dress. So I do think that this is the best option. We don't really see the maiden in, in black in the video game in very dynamic poses. Most of the time you see her, she's kind of just in the Nexus chilling on the staircase or she's in a standing upright position or she's, you know, reaching for your hand or so on. So we don't really see much in terms of dynamic poses. So I think this fits perfectly for figure form and I'm pretty happy with the way that this came out. The final accessory is the typical Figma display stand. It just ports into a hole right in the back of her cloak there. You just have to move the ponytail out of the way and then she can stand up with no issues. You can even have her holding her torch as well and it will be balanced. All right, and I think this is what everybody wants to see, but how does she stand up next to the fluted armor, which is a previous figure from Figma from the Demon Souls line? And I think this looks fantastic. The whole reason why I purchased the Maiden in Black is to go with this figure. And this is absolutely amazing that we get Demon Souls figures, characters actually from the game. And yeah, I can have a lot of fun posing these two together. If you want to mix and match your video games, here she is next to a Figma Link. Next to a Mythic Legion's Valiant Knight. Next to a Mezco Conan with a Barbarian Booster Kit. And next to a Kulu World Skeleton. Okay, so what do I think about the Maiden in Black? I have to say that I'm pretty happy with it. Even though the lower body's in fixed positions, I'm happy that they're really easy to swap out. However, I would have loved to see some more of these lower body swappable parts. Perhaps maybe a kneeling position or a crouching pose. It is an expensive figure, around 120 Canadian dollars, so only buy it if you're a hardcore Demon Souls fan or FromSoft supporter like myself. If you already have the fluted armor though, this figure is a must. If you found this review helpful, hit that thumbs up and subscribe buttons, leave a comment below on whether or not you're picking up this figure, head on over to Instagram at plastic.life for more action figure picks, and always remember at the end of the day, it's your collection. Buy whatever makes you happy. I hope you'll catch my next videos. Take care. <laughs>